Um, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to, um, to take a few minutes, Mr. President, to talk about two prominent Louisianians who are either transitioning or have transitioned into new ways to serve our state. Um, the, the, uh, and, and I'm not unbiased about these individuals, as you will shortly be able to tell, but I think, I think, uh, I think most Louisianians who are fair-minded will agree with what I'm about to say. The first person I want to talk about, um, and I've known mo both, of, both of these folks for a long time, is uh, Rolf McCollister. Uh, Rolf uh, did own, uh, he sold uh, a number of his companies. What did he do? Well, let me just say generally first, Rolf, <clears throat> Rolf was a very astute and successful business person. Uh, he's one of the most prominent not the most prominent publisher in Louisiana. Uh, he started from scratch um, a, a periodical called the Baton Rouge Business Report. Um, and from that, Rolf expanded. I mean, the list of his publications is, is very impressive. He, he, he started with the Baton Rouge Business Report. He publishes... 1012 Industry Report, Report 225 Magazine, In Register Daily Report, 225 Dine, Best of 225 this week. He also started a very important tradition, which is, is looked forward to in, in my state, called the Business Awards and Hall of Fame. Uh, he started the Influential Women in Business, and he started the Top 40 Under 40 list recognize some of our younger citizens. Uh, Rolf is retiring, effective at the first of the year. And despite all, all of Rolf's success in the business world, he's also a banker and he does other things, all self-made. Uh, aside from his success in, in the, the, the world of uh, publishing and journalism, um, the, the most important thing Ralph McCollister has is his passion. Now, he's smart, he's very intelligent, graduate of LSU, um, extraordinary character, um, very dependable. If you need something done, you go to Ralph, trustworthy. But, but it's his passion that has most impressed me about Rolf McCollister. I, I first met Rolf in 1987. I knew of him, but I met him. Louisiana had elected a brand new reform governor, a former congressman by the name of Governor Buddy Romer. Like many of our reform governors, uh, Buddy was to serve one term. And when Governor Romer took over, um, Gosh, the state was a mess. Uh, we had, I think it was a seven, eight billion dollar budget. We had a 1.1 billion dollar structural deficit. When Governor Rummer became governor, we couldn't make payroll. Um, Our schools were a mess. We had no charter schools in Louisiana. Our, our universities were floundering. Um, our, our, you know, and and, and when, you, when you don't have adequate funding, you, you, your universities tend to cannibalize each other. They, they were all competing for the dollars. It was like Lebanon. You didn't know which faction was going to be, was going to be the winner today. Our campaign finance 
in Louisiana was a mess. Um, at that time, it was legal and not out of the ordinary for somebody to, to, to put $200,000 cash in a suitcase and take it to a political candidate. And it was perfectly legal for that candidate to take it and perfectly legal for that donor to give it. Uh, Governor Romer set out to uh, try to fix some of these problems. And by his side was Rolf McAllister. Not in a paid position. I was working for Governor Romer then as his lawyer. Rolf just spent all his time helping, and we needed him because Governor Romer um, would listen to him. And Rolf was there every step of the way. And after Governor Romer got beat, Rolf didn't stop. He's never stopped. Uh, he's been a leader in the charter school uh, uh, movement in Louisiana for as long as I can remember. He believes that competition makes all of us better, and it will make our public schools better. Uh, he did a stint on the LSU Board of Supervisors, which runs our flagship university, LSU. Uh, Rolf, Rolf didn't, didn't ever hold back. I mean, he, he said exactly what he thought about what was working at LSU and what wasn't working. Um, and Rolf made a lot of people mad. But Rolf always believed, as did Governor Romer, and frankly, as do I, I learned a lot from both of them, that if you make the right people mad, you're doing your job. And uh, this, was, this was all, I mean, it was all because of his passion, because he cared so much about Louisiana to make it better. He didn't make any money off of it. It cost him money. Uh, and I'm sure his family said, hey, Rolf, you know, can you come home a little earlier tonight, you know? But we're, Rolf's just, he's just, a, he, he, he's just a fine person, and I'm very proud to, want to have him in Louisiana. When I count my blessings, I count Rolf twice, and he's transitioning to a, to a new role. He sold his company to his partner, who's another great guy, Julio Mara. But Rolf's going to still be involved in my state, and I just want to thank him.